country predictability. The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. Now, did I get delivered here? Somebody tell me, please. This old world confusing me. Flowers as mean as you've ever seen. Ain't a bird who knows your truth. Then a little voice inside you whispers. households, both alike in dignity, and fair Verona where we lay our scene from ancient grudge break new mutiny. No, 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 no. As usual, in the beginning there was chaos. No, this is not the book of Genesis, for instead this chaos was called none. None was the black water of chaos, both boundless and dark. Out of this calamity, Atum, the god of life, brought himself into existence. Atum's first task was to create a source of matter for which to stand, and so a hill, rising above the ink-like ocean, came into existence, becoming the earth. Knowing he could not defeat none on his own, I cannot defeat none on my own, Atum became one with his shadow and cuffed up his son, Shu. Atum! Then, from his left nut, You mean Tefnut. Same difference. My children, I created you to work, and work you shall do. And so, Shu and Tefnot were given the task of separating chaos into the principles of order, law, and stability. Chaos shall be divided with luminescence, and for light is day, and dark is night. This newfound order we have established, Tefna, should be called Mat. And Mat looks like a feather. But why? Because it is light and pure. Okay, what else? Shu and Tefna continue to establish order, creating Geb, the god of earth, and Nut, the sky god. Heather, goddess of love and beauty, and Throth, the god of wisdom. While Shu and Tefnot were off making more gods, Atum was supervising, I guess? He basically peaced out for a while. As usual, with all stories involving gods, there is some sort of family drama. When Geb, the earth god, and Nut, the sky god, were created, they were tangled together, destined to be together, it seemed. Both Geb and Nut wished to be together for all eternity. What are you doing? Yeah, none. The earth and sky cannot be together. Doing so would only please none. Stop this accord at once. But come, what sorrow, <clears throat> what sorrow can. It cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me inner sight. Do thou but come close our hands with holy words, then love devouring death. Do what he dare. It is enough, I may but call her mine. Yeah, that was a quote said to Romeo by Juliet in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Basically the same narrative. You can pretty much guess what happens next. Despite Mott's warning against the order of a tomb, Geb and Nut got married. Nut gave birth to four children. First was Isis. Then Osiris, Seth, and Nyx. Could you believe her gallivanting around with my nut? She is not yours anymore. Nut was always my love. She meant the world to me. I knew from the moment she was first created, I loved her. Geb has betrayed the family, and now something must be done. This union between Geb and Nut is an insult to all we have accomplished. They wanted marriage? Fine. 
Let them remain married as punishment for the act of defiance. Not shall be exiled and pushed up high, high into the sky. From there, from there, Geb will see her every day, but will never be able to reach her. When news of the punishment traveled to Geb, it was much too late, for Nat was already positioned far into the sky. Saddened with grief for her beloved, Nat began to helplessly cry. Her tears creating rain that would reach down to earth. As tribute to his wife, Geb began growing life with the rain produced by Nut's tears on earth. It wasn't all bad for Geb and Nut. Unlike Romeo and Juliet, they eventually found a way to spend time together. But that story is quite boring. Moving on to the family conflict of the children. Geb shall declare who the real king of the hill is. Being the eldest of my four children, Osiris and Isis, you are both hereby declared as the king and queen of Earth, respectively. Try not to kill each other. I'm looking at you, Isis. Osiris has never even stepped foot on Earth. How is he supposed to be a worthy king of a kingdom he has never witnessed? Now, now, Seth, have faith in your brother. Osiris has proven to excel in almost everything, far more often than you have. This is so stupid. Why can't I be the king? I should be the king. Osiris is not fit to be the king. He does not have the support of the people. They will not listen to him. Action. But wait, there's more. Isis was pregnant with Osiris' child, Horus. Years later, in an epic showdown, Horus and Seth battled each other for the crown. It is ultimately Horus who defeats Seth and becomes the rightful king of Earth. Osiris became the ruler of the underworld and awaited patiently for the arrival of his brother. Despite the previous events, none is still present and more enraged than ever. Shu and Tefnut have disrupted and limited his powers by setting forth Mat, and so Nun sought revenge. I am Nun. You have spent too much time following a tomb's request and disrupting the chaos I worked so hard to establish. Yet I hold no grudge. Come, indulge in the gifts my chaotic waters have to offer. Temptation arose inside of Shu and Tefnut and soon they found themselves lost in none. Having lost all traces of his children, Atum had become desperate and sent his all-seeing eye to look for them, awaiting for their return. Atum, Atum. there, there comes, comes their, comes their eye, eye in the hands of Tefnut. At the sight of his children, Atum shed tears of joy. Those same tears gave birth to the first humans. Sing.